All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to our final webinar of our three part webinar series with NetApp. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join this. I'm Caitlin, the Marketing Associate for Razor Technology. And before we jump right into things, um, I'll give you guys a short introduction on the speakers. Today we have R Ryan Rosenkeimer. As the Director of Operations, Ryan oversees Razor's managed services and cloud engineering with a focus on driving positive customer support, helping shape the overall direction of technology, infrastructure design, and solutions for Razor Tech. Ryan applies his deep technical expertise to not only elevate the technical team, but help Razor clients achieve value-driven results. Ryan dedicates himself to maintain a broad and contemporary understanding of information technologies. This includes new technologies, trends, upcoming products and software, and paying close attention to the best practices as they develop constantly. Ryan has a knack for always staying ahead of the curve and making sure to pass on these ongoing changes in technology to Razor's customers. Today, we also have Aaron Kramer. He joined NetApp in July of 2000 and has spent his career as a subject matter specialist first as a storage systems engineer and as a cloud technologist for the last four years. He's been with NetApp as the company evolved from an under the desk sun file server replacement in the early 2000s to supporting mission critical SAN applications through integration with hypervisors and now broad cloud solution portfolio. Now I'll pass it off to Jason Fogg, the whiskey expert. Thank you, Caitlin. Good day, everyone. My name is Jason and welcome to the Pops Can Pop-Up and uh, Technology Webinar. First thing I gotta do is uh, take off this work shirt here and get a little relaxed, get on the technology train and let's have a taste. So please, everyone, if you haven't cracked it yet, uh, crack open the Pops Can train whistle wheat that you should have gotten in a package along with some other nice treats and snacks. Um, I am the owner, proprietor of Pasta Can, and I'm, it's a pleasure to be here today, working with everyone from Razor and NetApp. Thank you for having me. And uh, so let's just get into the whiskey a little bit, and um, I'll come back on in a little bit to uh, do a little wraparound story. Uh, but this is uh, this is product is uh, Pasta Can Train Whistle Wheat. This is a 93 proof uh, weeded bourbon. Uh, not why 93 the guy in the bottle my great-grandfather is john france mccann he was born in 1893 so i figured why not let's do 93 proof and, and um it came out great this is the tree of life train the uh the train of travel to new destinations and places and this is a, a whiskey that you would sit back relax on some travel or at home with family raise them to the ancestors uh with this train whistle wheat, it's a, I'll give it a little story about the mash bill here. It's a 45% uh, weeded bourbon. For it to be a bourbon though, it has to be 51% corn. And then the rest is rounded out with 5% um, barley. The, uh, the train whistle is, um, is a little story about John France McCann, AKA Jack jumping on a train. And um, I touched on that a little bit uh, last time. And we, we talked about the train. He was born in Scranton. He was a coal miner. And um, by happenstance, he jumps on a train after his mother passed away and, uh, and moves to Philadelphia, an unknown land for him, an unknown metropolitan area for him. And, uh, you know, things turned out great because guess what? I'm alive. I'm here today. And it's great to present in front of all of you. A um, couple of things is I do have a couple of these trinkets around here. I'll touch on them a little bit. But when you're tasting this whiskey, you can taste it with the snacks that you were provided. Um, you can go the, um, you know, the fruits and you can, you can just pair it and taste it and clean the palate with some good water if you have any. Just fill a nice glass up with your filtered water. And you can taste the, the different taste profiles of the whiskey. And I'll go over the Pops McCann three-part pour that I have here before my ice melts here. And uh, so first, when you want to taste the whiskey is the pops three part, the pops three part pour, excuse me, is just pouring out the whiskey and tasting any whiskey 
pasta can whiskey, any whiskey in the world, and tasting it straight and giving it a little nice sip, a little twirl if you like. And then you taste it straight. I already pre-added water to this. So if you want to open up a whiskey, you add a little water to it and it'll open up the whiskey and it'll bring out a little bit more flavor out of the whiskey. And that's always good to do that second. And then a nice on the rocks, finding your perfect proof, finding your perfect proof with ice cubes um, you can add, or sometimes you could do whiskey stones if you just want to chill it and you want to keep the, the whiskey um, to its natural form. But if you want to bring down the proof, if you're more of an 80 proof um, spirits person, whiskey, or any kind of spirits, you can bring it down naturally with the water. And uh, that's what this one is here. And um, just a nice little sipping whiskey. And you can taste it on the rocks. So throughout this uh, technology webinar and whiskey webinar, um, feel free to, um, you know, pair and taste with all the, the, the stuff provided in the box. And uh, with that all said, I'll come back. But right now, I'm going to pass it on to Ryan. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining in today. Uh, this will be the final part of our three-part series with our partner, NetApp, as Caitlin mentioned before. Um, again, my name is Ryan Rosenheimer. I lead uh, Razor's managed services and infrastructure vertical. Um, as my fellow team members have discussed in prior webinars, NetApp and Razor have been working together for many years uh, with our key goal to help our customers drive success across uh, many different key topic areas uh, around their data storage. Today, we're going to discuss uh, how Razor and NetApp help our customers with their digital transformation around data governance. So to kick off, uh, I want to talk about Razor's kind of service methodology and, and, and it drives in, in the direction of how we get to the more transformational side of, of how we work with customers. So we have a, a value model with Razor uh, where you know we're not here to, to displace and, 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 and build more technologies with customers, but our, our key areas are, are split into two different sections. We have controlling our, our, our cost control of customers around our core managed services. And then part two of that is really driving into the transformational services. Uh, with transformational services, we're doing more things around productivity and optimization and, and, and innovation and modernization with customers. The whole idea is to really start driving the scalability of the things that we can offer uh, as we move into the transformational stages. These stages allow us to help drive customers growth through optimization and modernization, like I said. Um, we start to spend more time working with customers around the elements that we've already built in the first stage of managed services. And, you know, one of the areas that uh, we're seeing more growth and drive the customers is around their data governance and working with customers to better understand the entire data state. As we start to collect data, as we gather data, and as we start to build our storage systems and, and, and try to figure out what to do with it all, customers start to turn and figure out, you know, what are things that they can do around um, the data governance and the data state of that data and, and how to benefit their business and how they can use that data um, to better scale and, and build for the future uh, as part of their transformational stage. So today we said we're talking about data governance and it has many different definitions, but you know, narrowing it down, it's very simple. Data governance is a set of data principles and practices that ensure high quality, uh, through the complete like through like through the complete life cycle of their data, so it's very simple. It's it's the idea of efficiency, governance, visibility, and seamlessness of that data, and how we use that data and and how it can be used across many different verticals of your business. So data is becoming a core component, like we said, an asset, and and it, it is really starting to determine the success of their business. Digital transformation is on the agenda everywhere. You can only exploit your data and assets uh, as you do successful data transformation as we continue to drive forward and how to govern their data is really the key topic that's starting to come up with a lot of our customers. This means you know, it, it's imperative to deploy a data governance framework that fits the organization that you're working within and the future of the business objectives and the business models of the business. So the framework must control the data standards and need for the journey and the delegate uh, is required for the roles and responsibilities within the organization and in relation to the business ecosystem and where the company plans to take that and how they operate with that data. 
So, you know, what's the importance across many different verticals in the company? You know, from the management level, it's important to ensure the oversight of corporate data, the assets, the value of the impact across the business and how it affects the operations and market opportunities. On the finance side, it might affect the safeguarding consistentness of accurate reporting on sales, marketing, and enabling trustworthy insight into customer preference and behavior, understanding how sales drive the customer interaction and the interaction from those customers and, and what their behaviors are around your product and your services. From the procurement side, in the supply chain and how we manage those things and how we fortify cost reduction and operation efficiency and the initiatives that are built around exploring those data and, and the ecosystem around it. On the production side, it might be something that's essential about deploying automation and taking that to the next level of how can we build artificial intelligence, machine learning, those kinds of things into those systems. And even on the legal side, the compliance, um, the requirements and, 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 and the other elements around, you know, how do we increase regulation of those requirements that we're being held to and the standards from a legal perspective. So a well-managed data governance framework uh, will underpin the business transformation toward operating to a digital platform on many different levels within the organization. And this is why it's so important to start focusing on these ideas around the data state and, and what we're doing there. And with that quick intro, uh, I'll let Aaron from NetApp talk a little bit more about how Razor and NetApp are working together with the services from NetApp to help our customers drive new visions around their data state. Well, thank you, Ryan. Um, yes, my name is Aaron Kramer, and I have been at NetApp for basically my entire IT career. I've been in the cloud group for about four years. And there is a wide portfolio of solutions and service offerings that we do uh, for cloud, for hybrid cloud, both for on-premise and in, in, uh, you know, in any of three hyperscalers. And yes, we, uh, uh, Razor works with us and, and takes the various offerings that we have and puts them together into managed services or resells them to, to, to you, their customers. So we have a really good partnership with Razor. And uh, as he was saying earlier, you know, data governance, the more data you accrue and, and, and what you have, it, it becomes very hard to, to sort of keep visibility on it and, and keep governance on it. And not only is it just knowing, hey, what sort of information do I have? Well, now with all the various privacy regulations uh, in place across the globe, there are now additional reasons why one has to have good visibility and governance of their data. And so today, I'm going to just touch briefly on Cloud Data Sense, which is our service that uh, does this across anywhere your data might be, be it in one of the three hyperscalers, be it on premises, it could be on anyone's storage, it doesn't have to be on our storage, so whatever is put and put together for you, this tool can be used to help those, uh, to help the on-prem <clears throat> or to help the, 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 the IT admins and things basically find the needles in the haystack. Next slide, please. So again, kind of a marketing slide, but it's very true. I mean, organizations do have a growing need to maintain the governance of their data. And uh, again, the, the, the way, you know, if you take one thing away from it, the, what, what we, how we describe cloud data sense is oftentimes, especially around uh, privacy regulations or figuring out uh, how old data is, or maybe you're doing a data migration and want to see if, if all that stuff that's been sitting on those drives for, for five or 10 years is really even worth moving into the cloud, et cetera. That's like finding needles inside of a haystack. And uh, Cloud Data Sense is there to basically get rid of all the hay and let you find the needles. And so instead of admins having to look at time consuming and repetitive tasks to do this over and over again, Cloud Data Sense makes it very quick and actually has a full automation engine to make it very simple. Uh, and as we'll see as we go through the deck, uh, it, uh, you know, this can chew up a whole lot of time and Cloud Data Sense is there to, to make it very simple and very easy to respond to both uh, internal requests, like again, hey, we're getting ready to move some, move a uh, migrate uh, a workload from one data center to another, or possibly into the cloud, we need to know what's in there. Or if you get a, a request from a, one of your end users or a privacy regulator saying, hey, we need to know what you know about people. Next. So the technical challenge, again, repeating what I was saying before, is that, you know, finding this information in an accurate and efficient way is, is Again, like finding needles in a haystack. It is, it, is, it is something that needs to be repeatable, but oftentimes isn't. Uh, and there is massive amounts of, of new data coming in all the time, uh, both from the companies generating and also things that are coming in from, from personal, from, from personnel, from, uh, from outside sources, et cetera. 
And uh, especially when it comes to terms like uh, uh, you know, privacy regulations to make sure that you know what kind of data you have on individuals and where they are, are quite critical. And then lastly, again, is automating this process because unfortunately it isn't just a one-time only thing. This, this kind of uh, visibility into your into data, what's in there, et cetera, is, is an ongoing and forever process. Next. So basically what Cloud Data Sense does, and first off on the right, that is what the GUI looks like. It is, it's a very easy to use menu driven GUI that has all kinds of tiles about things like, uh, is your data stale? Do you have non-business data in there? Do you have, what kind of large files do you have? Where are they spread out across your repositories? You can set all kinds of policies on, hey, are, do, I, do I mistakenly have uh, private data? Uh, with open permissions on them? Do I have files that are, that are old, et cetera? Do I have credit cards where I shouldn't have? So again, Cloud Data Sense, what we say is, is let us find the needles in the haystack for you. We, we automate the process. We make sure that sensitive data is stored where you want it. So not only can we find that sensitive data, classify that sensitive data, but we can also show you where it's living and even give you uh, operations to be able to move that information, tag that information, et cetera. So if it's in a place it shouldn't be, you can go ahead and move it somewhere else. Um, the, it is real time available anytime you wish. So it's, it's not a batch process. It's always up to the information. Uh, there are policies and, and dashboards in place that can be created to basically at a glance to see what's going on. And again, <clears throat> in addition to dashboards, there are also reports around HIPAA, reports around credit cards, reports again around things that a privacy regulator from uh, the California Privacy Initiative or the European one or any others, if they came and said, hey, we need this from you, the system can actually generate those reports uh, by themselves. Next slide, please. So the three main use cases, number one, is, is maintaining governance. Again, to, to, to get insights on, do you have the same copy of, of, of a given file in, in, uh, in, in many different places? Uh, do you have files that are non-business um, you know, non related? And I should take a step back and say that there's an AI engine in this system that can actually identify what a file is. And not just, oh, it's a Word doc or it's a PDF or it's a GIF. It can actually pop open files and take a look and say, oh, this looks like a resume. This looks like a contract. This looks like a cat picture. This looks like this and that. So it is able to classify information into categories that you can easily tell, oh, this makes sense. We have a bunch of resumes in this folder. We have a bunch of contracts in this folder. Oh, wait, we've got a bunch of, of JPEGs in this folder. Maybe those don't belong there. We've got a bunch of recipes in this, in this folder. That's a home directory. Maybe it doesn't belong and maybe it's been moved someplace else. So, and just day-to-day -day operations, knowing what kind of data you have, how old is it? Is it redundant? Is it appropriate? You know, am I, is Aaron doing what he often does, which is put a whole bunch of virtual machines up into the uh, up into one of the home directories up on a on a NAS server somewhere? That's not that's that's not the best thing to do, and that you can identify those kinds of things. Furthermore, and and even bigger is being able to demonstrate compliance, and we'll touch on this in the next couple of slides. In that, again, most companies these days are now bound by one or more privacy regulations, where you have to demonstrate that you know, you know. Uh, any any sensitive information that you're keeping on customers, like their their email addresses, their credit card numbers, their phone numbers, their addresses, even sensitive personal information that that revolves around categories like uh, uh, political affiliate, political affiliation, or religious affiliation, or uh, or uh, union affiliation, or me medical records and things. If if you're holding that the regulators need to know or that there are regulations that you're you need to adhere to to make sure those are protected those are locked down correctly etc and again this tool has the ability to find those kind of files as well while also showing yep you have information on someone that shows their ethnicity or shows their religious affiliation shows this and that and it can also say you know what these files are locked down and secured where they should be or oops you've got open permissions or they're over in this bucket where they shouldn't be so that's the second piece that it can do and in both cases these daily tasks can be automated so these reports can be run constantly you can create your own policies to say find me certain things so if you're looking for again credit card numbers email addresses files that are older than seven years um, you know, files that don't belong non-business files in a business folder you can create policies that will run 
daily and send reports back and say, hey, we've got we've got these situations occurring. Next, please. To delve slightly into the privacy regulation piece a bit further is what the privacy regulators ask for is first off, they want you, the customer, you, the, the company, to be able to classify what kind of information do you store and uh, you know, on, on individuals. And these could be, again, things like, like identifiable information like addresses, phone numbers, credit card numbers, social security numbers, health numbers, et cetera. But they can also be what's called sensitive data or sensitive personal information, which again is information about them, religion, sexual orientation, criminal records, health records, et cetera. Those things are governed by all of these privacy regulations we see here on the right. So you also need to figure out where these live. Thirdly, anyone now can go to, for example, I could go to Amazon if I wanted to, or IBM or NetApp and say, hey, I want you to tell me as an, as a, as an individual, everything you know about me. And the privacy regulations compel customers to be able to provide those reports back. So if a Jane Doe comes into Acme Widgets and says, hey, you need to tell me what you know about me, then Acme Widgets needs to be able to provide a report in a quick and timely fashion back to say, hello, Jane Doe, this is what we know about you. And then lastly, just like there are IRS auditors, there are also privacy auditors who might come knocking on your door and saying, <clears throat> we'd like to see that uh, you can prove to us that you're in, you're in compliance with our regulations. Again, this tool can do all of those things. It, it can classify the information. It can figure out what information is inside. It can show you where those are. Are they open to the world, which would be a privacy violation? Are, are they locked down correctly? And again, in steps three and four, if a, if a, if a person were to come to uh, uh, a company and say, please provide me all the information that you have on me, uh, Cloud Data Sense can actually provide a Word document within about 30 seconds, a couple of mouse clicks that can be then emailed off to that end user. Same thing, if, the, uh, if a uh, compliance officer comes in and says, <clears throat> uh, I, need to see, I need to see your records, please, there are a number of reports that can be run, again, almost, almost within seconds to show everything that they need. Next slide, please. So again, to sum up, basically, what are the customer benefits of, of this tool that allows them to have, or you to have visibility into what your data is, is both from a, in terms of both in a privacy regulation context and also in a just a, hey, what kind of information is this? It eliminates the manual tasks. It makes it very easy. Again, the reports can be generated in seconds. There are uh, alerts as well. So not only is it pro it, reactive, it's also proactive. So if, if you set policy, say find, you know, find a you know, alert me when there's a bunch of credit card files that are you know permission system, it will do that. Uh, governance, it can map data anywhere. This is not a, a NetApp tool. This can look at anything, any, any, and we'll see that in the next screen. There's all kinds of things it can look at and even look inside of databases. It, uh, the perfect visibility, there's a policy driven engine and a pick list engine where you can easily drill down to find all the files that you want and need. And it doesn't require really any setup whatsoever. It's just a matter of, of, of activating it. A virtual machine spins up in either in, in either the cloud provider of your choice or on premises. Uh, and as long as you provide it with uh, access permissions to the various uh, file shares and databases, which we'll see in the next page, it just goes. There's no, no tables to set up, no, no fancy networking to set up. It just uses strict standard access to get into data sets. Next slide, please. These are all the things that it can look at. So obviously, since it is an ONTAP product, it can look at all the ONTAP systems there in the upper left. But notice in the lower column there, it says any NFS file share, any SMB share. So basically anything that is serving out uh, Windows or Linux, Unix uh, file services, the system can scan to make sure that, uh, you know, to, to give you the information on what's in those, in those folders. We can also look at Amazon S3 buckets. We, uh, we will soon be able to look at Azure Blob. Uh, we can look at what's inside of OneDrive. But also, we can also look inside of what are in databases, uh, Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, Postgres, MongoDB, SAP HANA, and more to come. And again, no special setup is required when you, when you want it to scan an NFS share or scan an Oracle database or a Microsoft SQL Server database. All you have to do is provide it user credentials that you would for a, a, a read-only user, for example and it will go ahead and grab that information, bring it in into its AI engine, process it, create metadata on it, and then again, give you those dashboards, those reports, 
those alerts and the, that searching engine that you can use if necessary to again, either get a, visi uh, a better look at your data for your own purposes, or also in case uh, a privacy regulator or a privacy regulation comes knocking. Next slide. So that's pretty much it. Again, it is a it is a service that uh, that we that we work with with Razor, that uh, again allows you to remove all the needle, remove all the haystack, and just see the needles, so that it makes it very easy to understand what kind of data you have, where it is, is it is it adequately protected? Oh look, um, I need to make sure I'm in compliance with with regulations. I can do that. I want to do a data migration or just understand what I have in, in these in these in these huge uh, NAS shares. It's able to do all of those things very simply and very easy. So one of our taglines is we unlock the best of the cloud. And yes, that's one of the things we do here with cloud data sets. Thank you. And I'm going to have my whiskey now, I think. Thanks, Aaron. Mm -hmm. So, like Aaron said, you know, <clears throat> with NetApp Cloud Data Sense, um, you know, we can help optimize storage costs, comply with security regulations, ensuring correct permissions are in place, as well as cleaning all that data and sensitive information before you know migrating things to the cloud. Once again, it's about kind of the efficiency, the governance, the visibility, and seamlessness of data governance, and all the things that go into that. So, whether you're trying to make confident business decisions or plan on a, a better way to base, uh, better things that are based on your data, meet regulations or requirements, improve data security by establishing more responsibilities, or optimizing the effectiveness of your data state. Working with Razor and NetApp, you know, we can start to have those conversations. We can start to show you how these services uh, can be leveraged to extend the use of your data state and drive your digital transformation forward. Uh, most of our customers are coming to us and, and really driving the need and desire around, you know, what to do with all this data, like we talked about, and, and how to ease, easily put it together into one kind of uh, simple frame set or, or, or pane of glass. We're actively helping customers with these initiatives and taking their data train to the next level. So with Razor and NetApp, you know, we continue to work together to drive new ways on digital transformation for our customers, and we'll continue to drive new ways around data governance and the new things that come out around security into the future. So with that, I appreciate everybody coming out today. I'll toss it back over to Jason to wrap things up, uh, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, great job, Aaron. Great job, Brian. Uh, you know, thanks for passing it back to me. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's great to be a part of this again. Hope you're, everyone's enjoying the snacks and the whiskey. Um, it's a great webinar when you get a chance to have some, uh, some snacks, whiskey, and li listening to important vital information for your business. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, it's great to be a part of. And, um, you know, we kind of had a little tagline about, you know, all aboard the tree of life train and technology train here. And uh, I got my lucky shirt on, my lucky hat here. And, uh, you know, Pops has some, you know, keywords here is, uh, you know, travel, see the world, relax. I think some, uh, you know, correlation here is you can relax when you're relying on and you're working with and your, um, your partners with the family of Razor Technology and the family at NetApp. Uh, they treat me like family. Uh, been great uh, to me. And, um, you know, it, it's a good correlation, you know, and um, but travel and see the world, as Pop says, life's a journey. Um, you know, life always comes full circle, whether it's, you know, the management of a family, you got the management services here, um, just some key words of correlation here. And, um, you know, the needle in the haystack, Aaron was saying a lot this week, a lot of work goes into this. So thank you everybody for putting all this together. Um, a lot of stuff goes into these webinars with the whiskey and the snacks and all that. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes and Aaron kept on mentioning, you know, the needle in the haystack. And uh, I just had like one funny, quick, but, you know, correlatory, um, you know, thing. If you have a bottle there, you can turn it around. And, um, you know, there's a picture of John Francis uh, McCann, uh, a.k.a. Jack McCann. He met his wife um, at an old Irish dance in Kensington. And, you know, so like, a, you know, to appease the spirits of uh, my great grandmother, she'll be on one of the next bottles called Pops Can uh, Bootlegger's Daughter. But the, the point is, is that uh, Pops McCann, Jack McCann, John France McCann found the needle in the haystack here in Philadelphia 
and um, produce many generations of family and people and uh, just like your family. And that's what this whiskey is about, um, family. That's what these webinars are about, working with companies that are like family, that treat you great. And, um, you know, also is, uh, you know, with our companies, we all have companies. I, I'm the owner and proprietor of Pops with Can. We all take pride in working for companies and, um, and, and some of us out there own our own companies or working for a company and trying to put the best foot forward. And it's, um, you know, what is our legacy? What is your legacy? And, um, you know, it's just some things that I had to, to mention there. And uh, a couple other things I'll mention with the travel and see the world, you know, as the, the train correlation, but, but travel, you know, I, I went on a little travel trip this week um, to some beaches, driving the whole time and roughing a little bit in tents and, you know, further apart from people. And I hit Assateague Island and stuff and was thinking deeply on some things and, you know, it helps you clear the mindset and, uh, you know, travel to new places is always fun, even though it's a little tough in our environment today. Some of us have to travel though for business. So, you know, enjoy it while you can. And um, it does help break up the monotony. And, um, you know, and I think sometimes we appreciate things a little bit more when you see, you know, the travel stuff restrictions and things that we got going on today. So, um, but travel, see the world and, um, you know, I hope everyone's enjoyed the train whistle wheat. Um, so, you know, sometimes we have questions, sometimes we don't. If there's any questions out there, you can always reach out to me or, uh, you know, pop them here. But, uh, you know, that's all I have here is just the, the family legacy and, and um, you know, life is a journey and the tree life train and all board and see the world and travel. Um, but, but set your mind at ease with all the services that they offer as well. So you can travel and have that peace of mind that all your stuff is protected and, and all your data is safe and accessible. And, um, and uh, it's in the right hands with, uh, with great people here at, at Razor and, uh, and NetApp. So um, I'm just going to play about 20 seconds of a song from Brink Crosby, the Chattanooga Choo Choo. So maybe you want to take a sip of whiskey, close your eyes, picture yourself on a train, um, maybe start the weekend with the bottle, but if you got work tomorrow, don't go too crazy. And, um, you know, just, um, you know, just picture yourself on a train or on a plane. <laughs> Me, boys, at the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Cheers. Track 29. Boy, you can give me a shot. I can afford to board a Chattanooga Choo Choo. That's just 20 seconds there. You can play the full song after this and enjoy your whiskey and dance a little bit in your living rooms or maybe on top of your desk or something and break loose a little bit. And, um, we do things differently here and it's just, uh, it's just to have fun and, um, you know, and, uh, you know, touch a little different bone and, and have some fun with everything here and technology. So, but uh, with all that said, um, thank you. And uh, I'm Jace with Pops Can Whiskey. Let's have a taste and good luck and cheers to everybody and uh, see the world and travel. Cheers. Thank you everyone for attending. We really appreciate it. Enjoy your snacks and whiskey and have a good day. Thanks everyone.